Hello, welcome to this next episode of Building a Second Brain in Upnote. Today, we're thinking about implementing para in Upnote. Most systems focus on organising your notes by where you found them. Para, on the other hand, organises your notes based on where you're going to use them. In Upnote, you can actually do both. A real life example of organising by when you'll use it, think about your clothes. Now you may have noticed from these videos that I don't actually have a lot of different clothes, so this doesn't really apply to me, but you might think that people generally organise their clothes based on the type they are. So socks with socks, shirts with shirts, etc. And they do, but think about it. Much more than that, you organise your clothes by when and how you're going to use them. Where I am, summer is just about to start, I hope. And all over the place, people are soon going to be packing up their winter clothes and moving them into storage, putting them up the loft maybe, and unpacking their summer clothes, organising them by when they're going to use them. The clothes that I'm wearing tomorrow, ideally, I'm not going to keep those in a drawer organised by their type. You might get them out ready, you might put them on a chair in your bedroom, ready for the next day. The clothes that I'm wearing right now, I tend to keep those on my person where I'm using them. I don't go to work totally starkers because I have to organise my clothes by type in a drawer. My gym kit is here in my gym bag and that's in there because that's where I will need it next. It's not in a drawer organised by type, you get the idea. Now with Para, the system in building a second brain, you organise your notes by where you need to use them. Projects, areas, resources, archives. So let's dive into Upnote and see how to set this up. So here we are in Upnote and we're just going to create the notebooks to set them up and you do that just by clicking new notebook. You can also use command shift n which will create a new notebook and let's just go for the first one projects and then we're going to create new one areas new one resources new one archive. They're in the wrong order, but in Upnote it's very easy. You can drag and drop the folders so that they're in the right order. And that creates your master folders. Projects, areas, resources, archives. Now inside each of these, you might want to create subfolders. So a new nested folder, and let's put in here health as an area. Another one, family. Under your projects, quarterly report. Uh, that's pretty bland, but you get the idea. Run a 10K. Let's throw that in too. Book notes, project, archive. So for example, if I'd finished this quarterly report, then I could just edit it and nest it under my project archive. Customization quick tip before we press on. It's really valuable to customize things and Upnote lets you do this. So it all looks pretty samey, even if you minimize everything, they all look pretty samey. I actually use this website, Material Design Icons. Um, I'll stick the link in the show notes. You can search for anything you want. So let's say, for example, for the, the health or the fitness one that I just created, you want somebody who is running, run. I like to be really healthy, so we're gonna go with run fast. Select that. And then you can do this advanced PNG export, which brings you here. I generally pick the size for Upnote covers as around about 150. If I give them a little bit of padding, let's go for two. It just makes them fit the limitations of the notebook file size. And then you can change your color. So what I generally tend to do is pick a color. So we're gonna go for orange for the foreground and then I will pick that same color for the background, but make it 35% transparency. Download that, and let's go for this health, edit, add a new cover, and then just select that update, and you see you've got that, and in, in here, looks pretty smart as a notebook cover. And you can do that for all of your notebooks. But how is this helpful? Well, it helps us identify what's what at a glance. So I color code my projects, my areas, my resources, and my archives differently. 
and I choose relevant icons for each of the different notebook covers. It helps me see what's what as I glance through. And it also gives that personal aesthetic appeal so you actually enjoy being in your notes app. Now the system is set up, we have to think about how to use it. So first off, what are projects? Projects, these are things that have a defined endpoint. They're the things that you're working on right now. I also have a folder for all of my future projects, things that I plan to work on in the future, but I'm not thinking about yet. I used to have that as part of my projects folder, but I've moved that into my resources section because I think it fits more neatly there. Areas. What are areas? Now, these are the different areas of your life, your responsibilities, the roles that you have in life. You need to give them time, you need to give them focus, but they're going to be with you for a long time to come. They don't have a defined end point. For example, training to run in a 10k race would be a project because the 10k race is the defined endpoint. But fitness would be an ongoing area that you want to think about for a long period of time. Often though, it's worth bearing in mind that your projects actually come out of your areas. So the 10k race would be a project that comes out of your fitness area. Resources, what are resources? Now this is a place where you can put anything that you want to keep. It provides supporting information, supporting materials, but you don't necessarily have a current active use for it. For example, this is where I put all of my book notes, my recipes, quotes that I like and might want to use in the future, checklists for travel or future things, uh, details of things that I want to buy, sermon notes, study notes, all of these kinds of things they go into notebooks in my resources. And lastly, the question that often plagues me, what should you archive? Generally, I archive stuff that I've finished with. Most of the time, this would be completed projects. So the whole notebook gets moved into my archives. But you might wanna create archive folders for notes that are within your resources and your areas of focus that you no longer need. I've seen a video recently where somebody creates one notebook or one folder for every year, and that is the folder that they put all of those notes in. They archive them based on the, the year in which they were finished with them, but they're still there within your system should you ever need them again. That's important. Over time, as you follow this process, you'll build up a decent set of folders and notebooks within UpNote projects, areas, resources, archive. And the key is when you get new notes into your system, like I've got here, to think about how you organize them. Now, one of the things that I love about Tiago Forte's book and about his approach is that he makes it crystal clear that trying to be perfect with this is gonna be an absolute killer. So it, it doesn't matter if you put a note in the wrong place. You can always find it again with your search. Just to give you a quick idea, in UpNote, say for example, I've got this article here, stop procrastinating once and for all, and let's say I've got resources notebook of articles. The way you do that is you can come down here to the bottom and you can click there, and then you can type in your articles notebook and, and then just click and it's in, or command, I'm on a Mac, so it's command shift B, brings up this and put it there. And you can do that with all of the notes that are in your uncategorized section. But the power of UpNote, and the, one of the things that I love about this app is the power of multiple notebooks. So, as I've said before on countless of these videos, you could have it in your uh, archive, your project archive, you could have it in your health, you could have it in a current project, building a second brain. And this note is now in all three of those notebooks. You can have it in more than one place. So you can add notes to a new project notebook and keep them in their original place. One of the downsides of using the para system in something like Evernote, for example, is a historic note that's in your resources or your archive is relevant for a project you will move it into your project. And then you have the conundrum, when the project is completed, 
do I archive that note with the project or do I try and return it back to its original home? And you have this headache of constantly moving notes between notebooks. You don't need to do that in Upnote. So say for example, I was creating a new project and there might be some notes that I want to bring into this project as well as the new ones that I'm gonna create. But then that leads to the question, doesn't it? How do you know what notes within your resources, your archive, your areas to harvest and bring into your active projects? And the answer to that is you search for them. First up, there's the old fashioned way, and I'm a great believer in this. The old fashioned way of finding it yourself is still really effective. So I know that I've got a, a historic project in my project archive that has two notes that are relevant to my new project. So I am going to add those two notes to my new project, and there they are, but they're still in my archived project. I know that this article is gonna be relevant, so I'm gonna bring it in. But then you can also do it using the search in Upnote, and that is just Command or Control G, and that brings up your global search of all of your notes stored within the workspace of Upnote that you're working on. This is best for things that you've forgotten that you have. So you might do a keyword search like for second brain and still what come, see what comes up. So you can see I've got uh, these notes that have come up and this notebook and any of these notes you might think, okay, well they're relevant to my project. Let's try another one. Let's say you're starting a project like Carl Pauline's minimalism project. You might search for minimalism you get this article, a summary of deep work, which has actually been produced by uh, Reagan Rose, and you might want to bring those in. So you can just search for the notes that are relevant to the project. Just a quick tip for naming your master folders. You'll see here in the sidebar that you can have them in whatever order you want. But when you add to a notebook, they're always gonna be alphabetical based on the master folder. Similarly, if you go to the notebook screen, they're also gonna be alphabetical based on the master folder. One way around this, you can put 01 projects, 02, and then alphabetically, because of the, the numbers at the start, they'll be in the right order. And when you want to add a note to a notebook, you get projects, areas, resources, archive in the correct order. That is worth doing. So that's how you use para within Upnote. So I hope you found this valuable. I hope you found this helpful. Please do hit that like button if you've had. Share this video with anyone else who might be interested. Subscribe to the channel. Please do check out these videos that are on your screen now for more content about Upnote. And please join us on the next video, Distill and Express, how to harness Upnote's editor.